in place of Fibber McGee, usually heard at this time, we present a rebroadcast of the Abbott and Costello Show with music by Freddie Rich and his orchestra and songs by Connie Haynes. And in answer to the many requests from you men and women in the armed forces of the United Nations, you'll hear that famous baseball routine starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Freddie Rich and the orchestra open the program with I Know That You Know. Just look at your face. Where did you get that black eye? Yeah, but I got that black eye in a restaurant down the street. How could you get a black eye in a restaurant? Oh, they had a sign over the counter that said, Ladies served here. Yes. So I ordered a blonde. I, oh. <laughs> oh, I see. You were injured in the fracas. Who, me in the fracas? Yeah. Not me. I was struck between the vestibule and the kitchen. Oh. <laughs> why, why do you always go around and get into fights? Oh, no, not yet. You, you're, you're in no condition for that, Lou. Who's not in condition? You. Who ain't? At least they're in shape. So am I, Abbott. When I woke up this morning, I felt like jumping out of bed and taking an ice-cold shower. Then I felt like punching a bag. Then I felt like skipping a rope. Then I felt like taking a ten-mile hike. And what did you do? I stayed in bed until the feeling went away. <laughs> oh, I'm going up to my Uncle Artie Stebbins' farm and help him pick strawberries. Well, no, that's very commendable. But you must be careful though. picking strawberries or you'll get uh, poison ivy. No, I won't. I got a system. The minute I get up to Uncle Artie's, I wrap myself up in tar paper bags, then I'm going to hang myself in the closet. But you can pick strawberries that way. I know, but I can't get poison ivy either. <laughs> you know, talking to you, Costello, is a waste of time. You know that, don't you? You're, uh, a, you're an imbecile. And I think you're an imbecile. And I say you're an imbecile. Now, just a minute, boys. What's all the arguing now, about? Now, you keep out of this, Niles. It's just between us imbeciles. <laughs> How do you expect to get along with people? How do you expect anyone to like you? Oh, I'm a bad boy! <laughs> well, you certainly are. Mrs. Niles will be uh, here any second. And just watch what you say. Try to be decent for once. Okay, Abbott. Now, sh- hey, quiet. Here she comes. Oh, I heard that remark, Costello. I didn't say anything, Mrs. Niles. No, that's Honest, right. I that's didn't right. say anything. Costello I'm isn't going... to be so nice. Absolutely, Mrs. Niles. He's not going to insult you. He's going to be a good boy. Aren't you, Lou? Yes, Mr. Rabbit. See that? Gee, Mrs. Niles, I sure am glad to see you. And by the by, can this be me talking? <laughs> Did you ever collect the insurance for the accident you had? Well, I didn't have an accident. Don't tell me you were born with that face. <laughs> No! What did I say? All right, Abbott, I'm sorry. Go ahead, wash my mouth out with soap. I said a bad thing. I'm a cat! I'm even lower than a cat! I'm an old Chevrolet! <laughs> oh, you know, Costello, I had a dream last night. I, uh, I dreamed they were holding a contest to see which comedian had the most empty space in his head. So? Well... One comedian had two square inches of space, another had five square inches, and another had ten square inches of empty space in his head. I'll bet you didn't see my head there. See it? That's why they were holding the contest. (laughs) (laughs) You certainly told him off that time, darling. Oh, you're so refreshing. You're my little grapefruit. Oh, no, dear. You're my little grapefruit. Oh, but you're my little grapefruit. Oh, I insist, dear. You're my little grapefruit. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard from a couple of old squirts. Come, Dennis. There you are. 
Now, you've done it again, Costello. Now, the only way you can square things is to buy a farewell present or a gift for the entire cast. Abbott, don't talk so loud. That's what you'll have to do. I did that very thing this morning, Abbott. I bought farewell presents for everybody on the show. I got some dandy presents in a department store. So why are you talking so low? Quiet. I bought them in the basement. Oh! <laughs> Stop whispering, Costello. What kind of presents did you get? I got a big box of candy for the boys in a band. Yes. And Connie Haynes and Mr. and Mrs. Niles and everybody. Just look at it, Abbott. Isn't that fine-looking candy? For heaven's sakes. I've never seen such big pieces of candy. What are they? Chocolate-covered bananas. <laughs> you dummy. I should have known better than to trust you to buy presents for the cast. Now we're in a fine pickle. Where are we going to buy anything at this late hour? I... Oh, come in. Come in. I, I aren't so handy. I always come in handy. <laughs> Well, look who it is, Costello. Our old friend Kitzel, the salesman. Mm, could be, yes. Well, well, how do you do, Mr. Costello? I haven't seen you in a long distance. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> hoo, hoo you're just the man I'm looking at. And you're just the guy I'm looking at, Kitzel. You know, you showed me an electric razor two weeks ago, and it's no good. Oh, pish posh, no good. Oh, no, pish posh, it's no good. Well, for you information, my little man, that was not an electric razor. That was a riveting machine. A riveting machine? <laughs> yes, yes. No wonder every time I shaved it hammers my whiskers in and I have to bite them off with my teeth. <laughs> Never mind that, Costello. Uh, look, have you got anything to sell us today, Mr. Kitzel? Have I got anything to sell? Yes. Yeah. Boy, boy, now you're talking my language, if that's possible. Uh, Why, I've got here um, He's uh, lost, he's no, lost. No, 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 no. Today I'm in the mansion business. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Was I'm that not that? lost. What I'm are not you lost. In? I'm in the mansion business. The mansion business? Yes, anything you mention, I got it. Oh. <laughs> I got a beautiful line of musical instruments. I got trombone, saxophones, a violin, a trumpet. Uh, wait a minute. Have you got a fife? Yes, and a couple of keys. Uh, no. No, you don't understand. A, fi a fife is a long, skinny thing. Yes, yes. That's my theory. Uh... Oh. Oh, wait a minute, Kitzel. Yeah. We don't want no musical instruments. Uh, what else have you got in your sample case? Uh, wait a minute. Have you got a potato clock? A potato clock? Mm-hmm. Doesn't he talk at peculiar angles? Yeah. <laughs> Costello, don't be silly. What, what in heaven's name is a potato clock? Well, you wind it up when you go to bed, and it gets you up potato clock. Who could get you up potato clock? I get it, huh? Ha, <laughs> boy, Kitzel. I don't like it. <laughs> oh, excuse me, my line. Come on, come, come, <laughs> Kitzel. Open that sample case and get out those presents. Now, just a second, just a second. Don't push me. What am I, a baby carriage? Look, Mr. Kitzel, yes. we have no time for foolishness. What have you got to sell us now, quick? What have I got to sell you? Yeah. Why, in this little satchel, I got gold rings, old rings, earrings, hair rings, cufflinks, studlings, golflinks, and bobblings, sports shoes, suede shoes, coat shoes, and look at you, clocks, stocks, socks, and smocks. <sighs> Not to mention... Sex suits, swimsuits, blue suits, and your suits, top coats, sport coats, overcoats, and anti-coats, bow ties, silk ties, home ties, a rail ties, quirts, shirts, assorted nerds, and a kiddly I be too. What a She introduced on our program some time ago. It's called To Heaven. My heaven, I love 
you so much And while our lips are making memories This moment is divine I see to heaven And both of them are mine I'm free And while our lips are making memories, this moment is divine. I see to heaven, and both of them Well, as you know, I have a baseball team. By the way, Costello, why don't you come along and play on the team? You mean it? Sure, why not? That's a good idea, Rabbit. But I don't think I know any of the players. I mean, after all, you see, some of these guys on the team I'd like to know. Well, I'll... If I'm going to join your team, here we go. Well, I'll introduce... So, I'll... Rabbit, what I'd like to know is this here. I'll introduce I'll... the boys to you. Suppose we do that. You tell me who's but playing on your team. You know, strangers may seem to give these ball players nowadays very peculiar names. You know, like Dizzy Dean and Daffy. Brother, his brother Daffy. Daffy Dean. I'm your cousin. Who are you? Goofy. Goofy, eh? Yep. Well, now, let's see. We have on the bags. We have who's on first, what's on second. I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. That's what I'm telling you. Who's Go on, ahead. Who's on first, what's on second. I don't know who's on third. Are you the manager? Yes. You know the fellow's name? Well, I should. Well, who's on first? Yes. I mean the fellow's name. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first baseman. Who is on first? What are you asking me for? I, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you who is on first. I'm asking you who's on That's first. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. That's it. That's who? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? Who is on first? Have you got a contract with the first baseman? Why, certainly. Who signed the contract? Well, naturally he signed it. It wouldn't who's... be any good unless he signed it. Unless who signed it? Absolutely not. So who signed it? He did. He did? Oh, positively. When you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. <laughs> After all, I mean, the man, man worked for it. He did. Yes. Who did? Yeah, absolutely. So who got the money? He did. Sometimes his wife comes down and collects it. Whose wife? Yes. <laughs> All I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's name on first base? Oh, no. I... What is on second base? Who's on second? Who is on first? One base at a time. Well, don't change the players around. I'm not changing anybody. I'm asking you, what's the fellow's name on first base? What's the fellow's name on second I'm base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Now, who's on first? <laughs> who's on first? That's right. Okay. Hey. <laughs> What is the fella's name on first base? Listen, what is the fella's name on second base? I'm not asking you who's on Who second. Who is on first? I don't know. He's on third. Now, we're not talking about him. That's entirely different. How did I get on third base? Well, you mentioned his name. If I mention a third baseman's name, tell me who's playing third. No, who's playing first? Never mind first. I want to know what's the guy's name on third. What's on second? Who's on second? Who's on first? I don't know. He's on third. Third base again, eh? That's you and I stay over there and don't go off. Now, what is it you want to know? Now, who's playing third base? Why do you insist on putting who on third base? Who am I putting on third yes, base? Yes, but we don't want him there. You don't want who there? No. Well, what's the fellow's name belongs there? What belongs on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third, third base. base. Yes. <laughs> Have you got an outfield? Yes. The left fielder's name. Why? I don't know. I just thought I'd ask you. Well, I just thought I'd tell you. Then tell me who's playing left field. No, who's playing first? What's on first? What's on second? I don't know. Third, third base. base. Yes. <laughs> And the left fielder's name? Why? Because. Oh, he's center field. <laughs> now, you know these players as well as I do. Have you got a pitcher on a team? Certainly. Wouldn't the, this be a fine team without a pitcher? The pitcher's name. Tomorrow. You don't want to tell me today? I'm telling you, man. Go ahead. Tomorrow. What time? What time what? What time tomorrow you going to tell me who's pitching? Now, listen. Who is not pitching? I'll who? break your arm, you say, who's on first. I'd have it your own way. I want to know what's the pitcher's name. What's on second? I don't know. Third base. base. Tomorrow's pitching on my team and he throws the ball. Freddie Rich 
punch the ball. Now, when he punched the ball, me being a good catcher, I want to throw Freddie out of first base, so I pick up the ball and throw it to who? Now, that's the first thing you've said right. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about! Well, that, that's all you have to do. To throw it to first base? Yes. Now, who's got it? That's right. If I throw the ball to first base, somebody's got to get it. Now, who has it? Naturally. Who has it? Naturally. Who has it? Naturally. Naturally. Mm-hmm. So I pick up the ball and I throw it to naturally. I know, no, you don't. You throw the ball to first base. Then who gets it? Naturally. That's different. Now, telephone. Sir. So I pick up the ball and I throw it to naturally. You do nothing of the kind. I throw it to who? Naturally. That's what I'm saying. You're not saying that. I throw the ball to first base. So who gets it? Naturally. Well, tell him that. Naturally gets the no, ball. No, he don't. Who gets it? Naturally. Well, say it. I'm saying it. I ask you, who's got it? Naturally. Now ask me. Who's got it? Naturally. All right, tell him. Name is you! <laughs> now I throw the ball to first base. Whoever it is drops the ball and Rich runs to second. Yes. Who picks up the ball and throws it to what? What throws it? I don't know. I don't know if throws it back to tomorrow. Triple play. Yes. <laughs> Another guy gets up and it's a long fly ball to be caught. Why? I don't know. He's on third, and I don't give a darn. That what? What was that? I said, I don't give a darn. Oh, that's our shortstop. Wait a minute. You'll never... Oh, left in this broadcast period, so here's a little session with Bob Crosby and his Bobcats with songs by Bob and Bonnie Lake and a couple of novelty ditties styled by the Pied Pipers. But now here's the man with the band, so kick it off, Bob. Some night that lid will gonna blow off. 
you're gonna give my heart the business. What do I have? Dream is here beside me. 
blown, the skies were overcast, but now the clouds have passed, you're here at last. Chills run up and down my spine, Aladdin's lamp is mine, the dream I dream. Was not denied me Just one look And then I knew That all I longed for Long ago was Radio Service. 